I hope you are doing great and because you have given the beautiful and the great responses to the videos that we are making. It actually tells us that we are doing a great job and we should be doing that continuously. There was a request of the addition of the questions. Children, of course, you'll be doing the questions also. Do tell me in which way you want to go about it. Whether we should do the questions based on the topic itself on that day particularly or in the end with a big long session questions throughout the chapter. Do write in the comment section and tell us what you need and of course we'll try our best to do that. Again in this beautiful session where we will be talking about sexual reproduction, this is the second session that we are into and first session was about the introduction and about the asexual reproduction. Today we will be studying about the sexual reproduction, very important topic and let's see what we have. Here, it's me, my name is Ankita Sharma and of course by now you are familiar to me that I am a biology teacher here at Vedantu and I love teaching. Rest, let's not talk about me here more. The introduction actually should come from your side. We know ma'am, we know a lot about ma'am. So not have much. Let's get into the topic of sexual reproduction. So as we know children, sexual reproduction is a more complex process than the asexual reproduction. Very easy, the clear cut definition that we have. And it actually involves more than two individuals. Two individuals are definitely there. Okay, one individual will be producing a different gamut and one will be different gamut. And that we usually say it's nothing but the female and the male individuals that are required in the process of sexual reproduction. Here majorly if you see on the screen we are discussing about we are discussing about the isogamy. Here can you see the isogamy is here right an isogamy and oogamy. What is the difference between here can you see the structures of the gametes. See children these the structure of the gametes it could be same they are Male and female are completely same. They are either, they are motile, they are motile or they are non-motile. Okay. In a, and, and in the an isogamy, what is happening? See, the male one, the male gamut is not huge in structure or it's very small in structure. Could be non-motile and motile. In oogamy, what is happening? The male gamut is smaller in size and is motile. And the female gamut is larger in size and is non-motile. So here is a clear cut difference between the male and the female gametes that helps in the process of sexual reproduction. Okay. So here it, it was very easy to understand that what is the sexual reproduction is. And if you want me to read this from the screen is nothing that it's a reproduction that involves the formation of male and female gametes either by the same individual or by the different individual of the opposite sex. Great. Let's move ahead and let's see what we have. Next, we'll be discussing about the different growth phases. Now, you must have seen yourself and the people around you changing from very small child to the old age. Now, that's a process that occurs in our body and that is happening because we have that particular cycle which pushes us from one phase to the other phase. Initially, we were very small in plants. Slowly, slowly, we'll grow. We'll be teenagers. Then we'll have adults. Then we have the old age. This is how the human cycle usually works. And in this cycle, what happens? We see and we see ourselves and people around us changing drastically in the phys physical appearance, their metabolic activities, their behavior. All things will change during this phase of their life. So, in the sexual reproduction, the period of after reaching the period of maturity, that is nothing but the puberty, what happens? The reproduction cycle starts. Okay, the reproduction cycle starts in the body of individuals once they reaches the for uh, that maturity phase. Okay, and after that phase, what happens? There are lots and lots of morphological changes, behavioral changes that we see. You are in that particular age and I can completely talk to you about and I can relate to the things that you are feeling at this particular moment. 
Sometimes you are happy, sometimes you are sad, sometimes you are very good to your parents, sometimes you are like, please don't talk to them or please don't talk to me in that thing. That is all of course, we can blame it on the hormones, but children, there is few responsibility from our side also. Aap kab tak har cheez hormones ke upar hum push kar sakte hai? No, right? So there are a lot of changes that occur and we need people around us to understand this. Right? If you want people around you to understand you, the only thing that you need to do is talk. So, do talk to your parents or to your teachers or to your friends or if not, then talk to me. We will discuss about lots of important topics and our life will be easy. Back on the topic, we were discussing about the various different phases. Just like in humans, we have the same thing in the plants and that phase is called as the vegetative phase here on the screen. We have usually seen this particular cycle here. Seed comes to the vegetative growth phase, right? From vegetative growth phase, it will be coming to a flower. Once the flowers will come, what is happening? It is a beginning of the reproduction phase and once the flowers is over, the plants die. Again, the whole cycle will start. This is what usually happens in the plants. We are talking about plants children here. So this particular phase where the plants produces the flower is called as reproductive phase. Now based on that, the plants have clear cut, clear division in between the annual plants or they are biennial plants. Okay, let's see what we have here. There are three different types of plants that we usually see. Annual, example could be wheat. Now what is your like ma'am, why you are writing wheat? What is happening here? They grow. <coughs> In a single season, right? From one season, they will be like through. They will not be waiting for the other season to come and just to bloom themselves or to produce flowers or to produce food. No. In the one season, everything is done. So, the crops that we usually have, pulses we can say, usually are from this particular category. That is annual. What is happening here? From the seeds to flowers and again to the seeds in a single growing season is called as the annual plants. Now, next is the Binary root plants like two. It's required two years to complete its cycle from the seed to the plant. So there'll be like lots of lots of waiting. They'll be waiting, waiting for a long time. Then only they will have the reproductive phase. And once they have the reproductive phase, then they'll be back to the seed form. Example, which is very easy, is nothing but the carrot. Remember the carrot. Third and very weird one is the perennial. Okay, plants. These what what is the function or sorry, what is the type of it? It's that that these plants come back every year, not every year, basically, year after years from the original actually grow more in size. Can you tell me the example? The apple tree or the pine tree are the example of these particular plants. Very strange, very strange students, but it is the Fact. Now we have different types here. Just look at the picture of bamboo. We have heard lots of lots of stories about bamboo. That bamboo keeps on inside the earth, like inside the soil for a longer time and suddenly it just pops up. Yes, those stories are all right. And then we have this beautiful Neela Kurunji. You must have heard of it that it only blooms once in a 12 years. Lots and lots of waiting for the people to watch and of course for the plant also. So this Neel Kurunji plant or this particular flower is found in the Nilgiri hills. Okay. And people especially visit during that particular time when the blooming is happening because when these flowers will bloom, all the hill will look blue in color. That's why they are called as Nilgiri mountains. So if you get any chance Whenever in your future, do visit this plant and just see this beautiful flowers and see the nature, how it works. So we have Neel Kurunji which blooms only in 10 years and then we have bamboo, right? And bamboo is there, which actually, what is it? Grow only flowers once in a lifetime, only once. And that too after 50 to 100 years, like that's a life lifespan and they have. And once they blooms, once there is a production of flowers, they will die. So that's a very sad part that you know they are dying just after the production of the flowers but that's of course we can call as life. 
Not similar thing happens in the birds as we say in general. Birds live by nature and they lay eggs seasonally. You must have seen various birds making their nest during at certain point or certain season of the year. It's not like that the bird is on the run of making the you know nest each and every day. Now they do it when the season is there. But similarly or not similarly actually we have birds which are being kept in the poetry and what has been done to them? They produce the egg throughout the year. Of course we know they are free of chemical reaction and they have given the temperature etc and all because of which what is happening they are able to produce the egg throughout the year and there is hybrids and there are just more of scientific equipments which are used and with that birds are laying eggs throughout the year and that can be used in various different ways by the population. So this is clear up to here and this is in like very general children. Okay now moving on to the mammals. We have seen that mammals are the one who actually can produce throughout their life. There could be a lot of variation in between but we have seen lots of variations here also. So we are usually called as the placental mammals, right? We are the placental ones because we have the placenta in the, during our birth, we are inside the placenta, of course, that's what we usually say, placental membrane, etc. So we are the ones which are connected with the placenta and of course, it's all in the womb where internal fertilization is happening. Yeah, so here we are on the next slide, okay? Yeah, so here we are on the next slide and this is about the Placental animals. We know that humans are the one which falls under this particular category. Dogs, cats, tiger also falls under this particular category. Now in this also we have menstruation cycle. Okay. Which occurs in the primates. Which has monkeys, apes and humans. And we have the ostrich cycle. Which is occurs in the non-primates. Which are cow, sheep, rat etc. We will be discussing about them in detail in the following chapters. But just to give you a brief picture about these two cycles menstruation cycle occurs like every 28 days that's a whole process occurs in the female body and after, in that particular process only ovulation occurs and after that fertilization if fertilization is occurring the baby will be conceived and the process will start this whole particular thing is in that particular way but in the different cycle what is happening they have a particular season or we can say a particular time where they will be producing that is a major difference between these two. We will be discussing more about them in our respective classes. So let's not touch that topic because of course we will be going topic wise topic not disturbing the flow of the chapter. In the chapter of course that we are talking about we have the two breeding seasons. Now first breeders are actually says there are seasonal breeders okay like we have cows, we have dogs, we have rats sorry cats and dogs and goat these are the ones which lives in the natural condition and exhibit reproductive cycle based on the environmental condition okay based on their environment in which they are living they will be favoring it too you must have seen usually the dogs have their babies in winters like in the end of the winters right in the various other animals also and there are continuous breeders that is nothing but us we are like the uh, humans and of course the guinea pig and the rats which actually produces throughout their season there is no stopping continuous breeder so they are called as continuous breeder so we have seasonal breeders and we have continuous breeders now the old age that old age that hits every one of us and we are like each and every time we are very very you know very conscious cave oh, we are getting old do tell me in the chat box definitely do tell me in the chat box that what are your views on the getting old and that's a natural process right we all believe that it's a natural process but each and every time if someone will ask how old are you we always tend to not to tell them the correct age of ours maybe but that's fine but that's the reality of all the human being the last phase of the life lifespan is and it's called as the end of the reproductive phase is nothing but our old age and what, what will happen in plants and animals? Hormone changes happening and slowly, slowly we become old. So I have the two pictures. Can you see the small beautiful plants which are actually been growing? 
Now there's this particular part. Small, small growth is there that's complete with the flowers, everything. Now it's died. Here is a picture of a human from actually there has to be from the smaller age, but we have this in from the adult to directly to the old, and that's how we all look. That's how we all will be looking once our cells loses their you know function when they are no not repairing much and slowly slowly the metabolic activities in our body will become slow and of course the old age will hit us that's a reality that we are into and we should take that reality enough of this all teaching but really with, with these sessions children i really want to connect to you i really want to know what are your views about various other things? How much you are focused in your studies and everything? If you want me to do some other kind of videos in which we can talk generally or if you have any particular doubts, do tell me we'll be doing that also if possible. There are always the chat box option that is open to you. Please comment and do hit the like button if you like the video. Okay, so this was the end of this particular part two. In the next part 3, we will be discussing about the stages of the sexual reproduction in which we will be discussing about pre-fertilization and gametogenesis. Okay, in the last video, which is a part 4 video, we will be talking about fertilization and post-fertilization. The last video, that will the fifth video, will be about neat questions. That's how I have planned this whole chapter for you. Do tell me if you need any, you know, changes in between. And you can do that by just commenting down on the chat box. Great. So, I'll take a sign off children from here. Enjoy your day. Okay. And keep on studying. Enjoy. Eat healthy. And if you're thinking why ma'am is sitting on the chair. Because it's Sunday and I'm just relaxing. See you in the next class students. Bye. Take care.